Down in the depths of an underground metro station, the sound of a scream was drowned out by the rumble of a passing train as three pairs of feet ran as fast as they could through an abandoned tunnel. Desperate to escape the dark, menacing figure chasing after them, the three urban explorers could make out the sight of a looming presence just a few feet back, its glowing red eyes burning into them as the monster gained ground, getting closer and closer. Their lungs were burning, their feet aching, but still the threat was almost on them. It was much bigger and faster than they were, and they knew that if they didn't find a place to hide, they wouldn't be making it out of the tunnels alive. It was so dark they could barely tell where they were going, let alone find a way to escape. But then up ahead they saw the welcome glow of fluorescent lights, the train platform. They've made it back to the active part of the station. The sight of a possible safe haven gave them a burst of energy that they needed to gain a little bit of distance between them and the dark figure chasing them. Just as they reached the platform, they heard the whistle of a coming train, and a voice came over the intercom saying, Stand back, the train is arriving. The explorers checked behind them and saw that the monster was almost on them. They could see it in the light now, its massive train body, its thin, bony, spider-like legs, its gaping mouth filled with sharp teeth. The train pulled up in front of them, doors sliding open, and the explorers jumped inside. The train door slid closed inches from the monster's face, and the explorers let out a heavy sigh of relief as the train rumbled to life, pulling away from the platform and leaving the monster behind. The explorers slumped down into the empty seats, each of them taking a moment to catch their breath. After that brush with almost certain death, it was over. They were safe. One of the explorers tossed her head back, laughing with the kind of giddiness reserved for the aftermath of the most seemingly dire situations. Everything was going to be okay. Once the adrenaline rush of the chase had subsided, the group took a moment to glance around the train and noticed for the first time that it was completely empty. At that same moment, there were no other passengers on board. At that same moment, the train suddenly screeched to a stop. They weren't at another platform. They were in the middle of a dark tunnel. The explorers stood up, checking for signs of mechanical malfunction. All the while, a sinking feeling came over them. Something was wrong. A foul, sour smell filled the train and thick liquid began to drip down from the ceiling and over the walls. All at once, the inside of the train took on an uncanny appearance, red and fleshy unlike any other train they'd ever seen. They'd escaped one monster only to run right into the belly of another. As the reality of the situation dawned on them, all the explorers could think was this never would have happened if the town hadn't reopened the train station. It all began a week ago, when the town council announced there'd been secret construction and renovations going on for months in the abandoned train tunnels beneath the town, and that they would be opening a shiny new metro station in those very tunnels. It wouldn't hold the rickety older trains of the 1900s, but brand new high-speed trains that would carry passengers back and forth from the little town to the nearby bigger cities that so many townspeople commuted into for work. No more hours in traffic at rush hour. This would be the new wave of transportation. While most of the town celebrated this exciting new development, there were others who raised concerns about reopening the abandoned train tunnels. There were legends, going back a century, that told of people venturing down into the tunnels and never coming back out. Some attributed it to a masked killer stalking through the darkness, picking off victims one by one. Others insisted the tunnels were haunted by the spirits of long-dead railway workers, seeking revenge on any who crossed their path. Yet another group of local folklore enthusiasts believed that some kind of monster was responsible for the disappearances, a predatory creature hunting passengers and using them as a food source. Whatever the explanation might be, there was a general consensus that the tunnels were hiding some kind of dark secret. Abby, a local librarian and hobbyist urban explorer, was determined to get to the bottom of it. She gathered two of her closest friends, Liza and Warren, and the trio hatched a plan. They would head down into the tunnels late at night and see if there really was anything terrible lurking down there. When the day came, Abby closed up the library for the night, and they gathered up their supplies, flashlights, food and water, their phones, and some emergency flares just in case they needed to use them. Then it was time to head down to the station. They went in through the new renovated part, jumping the turnstiles and walking past the well-lit train platforms, venturing into the dark, empty tunnels that were still abandoned. Abby wasn't sure if they'd find anything, but she wouldn't be able to forgive herself if she didn't look. It was the first time in her lifetime that enough rubble had been cleared from the tunnels to allow the explorers to get in. They had to at least go in and see for themselves. As the trio walked, they switched on their flashlights, sweeping the beams across the darkened tunnel. Warren stopped walking suddenly, calling the others over to see what he had found. There on the floor was a pile of bones. They were much too big to belong to a rat or a possum or even a larger animal. No, these were definitely human. 
and the skull that Liza nearly tripped over as she made her way toward Warren confirmed it. At some point, at least one person had lost their life here. But what had been the cause? Abby shone her flashlight along the walls of the tunnel, revealing deep scratches there all along the walls and the ceiling. A train crash of some kind? Remnants of failed construction? She couldn't think of anything that could have left those marks. The trio kept walking deeper into the tunnel, and as they went, they spotted more and more bones. This wasn't just a skull here, a femur there, it was a boneyard. Abby walked ahead of the others, her curiosity propelling her forward. All of a sudden, she came to a stop. Liza and Warren started to ask her what was wrong, but she shushed them, holding up a hand. Soon, they understood why. Up ahead, there was something lying on its side, something huge. It looked like a train, but it expanded and contracted in a steady rhythm. It was breathing. Specifically, it was snoring. They could just barely make out a large face on the front of the figure, two eyes closed in slumber and a wide mouth filled with teeth. The group had managed to discover the monster in the tunnels, and for now, it was sleeping. But what would happen when the metro station opened in a few days? What would happen when it woke up? Abby, Eliza, and Warren tiptoed back out of the tunnel, taking care not to wake the creature. They held their breath the entire time, terrified of what might happen if they made one wrong step, one accidental sound. But eventually, they made it back out. The next day, the trio crashed the town council meeting to warn everyone of what they had seen. There was something down there in the tunnels, and this new metro station opening was inviting disaster, and it was almost guaranteed to wake the beast up. Abby delivered an impassioned speech, but when she was through, the council just laughed at her and told her and her friends to get out. They tried their best to spread the word to warn people, but no one would listen. A giant train monster hibernating in the abandoned tunnels? It all sounded too ridiculous. But Abby wasn't about to give up, and neither were her friends. If they didn't find proof of the monster in the tunnels, the train station would open according to plan. And then, who knew how many people would wind up disappearing? They couldn't let that happen. So, in spite of their apprehension, they gathered up supplies again and prepared to head back down into the monster's lair. This time, they brought a bit more than some bottled water and granola bars. Warren packed a pocket knife, Liza brought a baseball bat, and Abby stuffed her bag with fireworks from the previous year's 4th of July. It wasn't much, but it was the best they could do on such short notice. Hopefully, they wouldn't need to use any weapons. They were planning to just get down there, take a picture, and get out. Abby had packed her Polaroid camera to capture proof of the monster's existence. She couldn't rely on her cell phone camera. People would just accuse her of photoshopping the images. An instant Polaroid would be much harder to fake. So that night, the three friends snuck back down into the metro station again, not knowing if they'd come back out alive. If they did make it back out, though, they would hopefully have all the proof the council needed to stop the station from opening. Abby, Eliza, and Warren crept through the tunnels until they found one they'd discovered before. They followed the telltale trail of bones, deeper and deeper, hearts racing from anticipation, until they reached the slumbering train monster once more. It was still deep asleep, its snores practically shaking the tunnel. This time, they got a better look at the thing. Its sharp, sharp teeth made for chomping the heads off unsuspecting victims. Its spidery legs, the sheer size of its metal body. If this thing got a hold of them, they would not stand a chance. Abby tiptoed closer to the monster, pulling the Polaroid camera out of her bag. She angled it perfectly, ready to capture a shot of the monster's face, with its body clear in the background, and then pressed the button. The shutter clicked, and a bright flash illuminated the monster's face. Then, much to her horror, its eyelids fluttered open, revealing two glowing red eyes that were staring right at her. All at once, the monster climbed onto its feet, its dozens of spidery legs, and towered over Abby and her friends. Its mouth stretched into a malicious grin as it took in the sight of its first meal in decades. While our three urban explorers had no idea of the true nature of the beast they were encountering, true experts in the paranormal and in internet urban legends know this terrifying creature as Thomas.exe. It began as a nightmare trapped in cyberspace, a digital ghost hidden inside a terrifying cursed Roblox game where it would subject the players to their worst nightmares. Thomas.exe is a creature that eats human flesh, but draws its power from human fear. Anyone who believes in Thomas.exe potentially makes him stronger, and after years of striking terror into the hearts of kids playing innocent games of Roblox, he'd achieved his dream, breaking into the real world. Thomas.exe first entered the physical world in a small town, devouring the people who'd first accidentally summoned him by playing his game. However, in a small town, the disappearances that his eating habits caused were far more noticeable. As a highly intelligent and evil being, Thomas.exe knew that if he wanted to keep this new arrangement going, 
he'd need to think bigger. He moved to the city, tunneling his way underground until he entered the very disused train tunnel that he'd been inhabiting for the previous several years. Here, he'd been feasting on unfortunate intruders for years, completely unnoticed, until now. Run! Abby screamed at the top of her lungs, shocking herself and her friends out of their terror-induced paralysis. Together, the trio of explorers sprinted back the way they came, back through the dark tunnel, tripping over bones as they went, but still managing to keep their balance enough to stay on their feet. They knew that if they fell down, if they lost their momentum, that train monster would snap them up in its jaws and swallow them whole. They made their way onto the brightly lit train platform, all shiny and new and ready for passengers once the station opened. If they had anything to say about it, the station never would. Abby clutched the developing Polaroid in her hands, careful not to drop it as they made their escape. This would be all the proof she needed. Now she just had to get out of here and get it into the right hands. It was as if someone had heard her silent wish and granted it because just then, a train pulled up to the station. Come on! Abby yelled to Liza and Warren. They piled inside as soon as the doors opened. The doors slid closed just before the spider train reached them, its mouth still wide and anticipating taking its first bite. They all sat down, trying to process what had just happened. They'd almost been eaten by a monster, an actual, real monster. But now, they were okay. They were on a train out of there. But where was this train headed? As Abby glanced around the empty train car, her stomach suddenly dropped. Guys, wait a second. The station hasn't opened yet, so where did this train come from? Just then, almost as if it had heard her, the train stopped. So suddenly, then Abby almost slid out of her seat. They were stopped in the middle of a pitch black tunnel and could barely see anything inside of the train car anymore. What's that smell? Liza groaned. What's that on the ceiling? Warren gasped. Abby switched on her flashlight, scanning the train car. The interior of the car had transformed. Gone was the shiny chrome and patent leather seats, and in its place was a landscape of red flesh that covered everything. Where did it all come from? No, Abby realized, it had been there the entire time. The way it looked before had been an illusion. She suddenly became aware of how warm it was in there, and then a troubling thought occurred to her. This isn't a train, it's alive. Specifically, the Urban Explorer trio had jumped out of the Thomas.exe fire and into a frying pan known as the Train Eater. Contrary to what the name suggests, this monstrosity doesn't eat trains. It's an incredibly long ambush predator, similar in physiology to a giant centipede or worm. It has huge, staring eyes all over its body and a huge, gaping mouth full of razor-sharp teeth. But the most remarkable quality of the Train Eater is its supreme power of mimicry. As our heroes discovered, it can appear almost exactly like a normal modern train, luring its innocent victims into its body. Back in the belly of the Train Eater, Liza and Warren couldn't stave off their panic anymore. They ran to the doors, trying to force them open. Warren grabbed his pocket knife, attempting to shove it between the doors and pry them apart, but they wouldn't budge. Liza took her baseball bat and beat it against the other set of doors, over and over again, until the bat splintered into pieces. Whatever the doors were made of, it was much stronger than any of them. While Liza and Warren futilely attempted to escape, Abby took stock of the train, or the thing that had been pretending to be a train. The car suddenly filled with a foul smell and she watched as viscous liquid began to drip from the walls and the ceiling. A drop of it fell on the back of her hand and sizzled painfully, leaving an angry red mark. Acid. Stomach acid. They weren't just trapped, they were being digested. She opened her bag, digging through it for a potential solution. There were the fireworks. But if she tried to use them to blow the doors open, it would just blow her and her friends up instead. As her mind raced and as Eliza and Warren continued to break down the doors with sheer force, throwing their bodies against them, there was a sudden heavy thud from above. Abby looked up and saw the ceiling of the false train car bulging inward slightly. There was something on top of the train. You see, Thomas.exe didn't take kindly to an opportunistic predator stealing its prey. It wanted to view itself as the apex predator down in the darkness of the train station, and the train eater presented some extremely unwelcome competition. That's why Thomas.exe had crawled up onto the train eater's back, the creature now dropping its disguise and assuming its fleshy pink true form. Thomas.exe began jabbing the spiny tips of its spider-like legs into the monster's mottled flesh, causing the beast to thrash and scream. Thomas.exe would make sure the train eater knows who's boss around here. Back in the inside of the train eater, the interior had fully morphed into a horrifying reality. The walls of the train had turned into a fleshy nightmare, the inside of a great red stomach. With the tide of stomach acid rising up around their feet and further up toward their ankles and knees, before it seemed like setting off the fireworks would be courting death, now Abby felt like it might be their only way out of here. 
She pulled out the fireworks and reached into her pocket for a lighter, clicking away and quickly trying to get a spark on the fuse. Come on, come on, come on! Meanwhile, on the train eater's back, Thomas.exe was continuing to mount its vicious assault. It stabbed its claws into the creature's skin and leaned forward with its mouth of sharp, jagged teeth, sinking them into the train eater's flesh. While the train eater was far greater in size than Thomas.exe, as a more of a simple and primal creature, it could never match Thomas's pure malice and viciousness. But that didn't mean it wouldn't fight back. The train eater was entering panic mode. The prey inside its gut was making a commotion, and this strange new entity on its back was causing it an awful lot of pain. If it wanted to come out of this encounter without being destroyed, it needed to take matters into its own hands. The train eater made a hard right turn, barreling face first into the aging wall of the train tunnel. Its sheer momentum sent it smashing through the bricks, scattering dust and debris everywhere. Thomas.exe was taken by surprise by the sudden collision, digging its claws into the train eater's back and clinging on for dear life. As the train eater burst through the wall, it came flying out into the fresh night air like a fleshy missile, skidding along the gravel of the train yard outside the subway station. It landed hard, exposed out under the moon for the first time in almost a hundred years. Thomas.exe's grip loosened, falling off the train eater and landing hard on the gravel in front of its face. But the discomfort of these two beasts was only just beginning. On the inside of the train eater, Abby was putting her Hail Mary pass into action. She lit up the fireworks and prayed for a positive outcome as she felt the wall shake around her. She could barely hear her own thoughts over the deafening destruction of the wall and the terrified screams of her two friends. But when the fireworks went off, it caused a violent reaction. The train eater immediately vomited, releasing the trio of humans and spraying nasty stomach acid right onto Thomas.exe's horrible face. Powered by pure adrenaline, the humans took off into the night, bolting away faster than they ever believed their legs could carry them. Thomas.exe and the train eater defeated and humiliated, both slinked off into the dark. Needless to say, when the evidence came to light, the city council delayed the reconstruction project, for a few months at least.